Today on Stock Charts in Focus, we're taking a look at four of my favorite stop setting tools around the site. We're going to do this in ACP, our new interactive advanced charting platform, and Sharp Charts, our legacy tool. Both platforms, both tools, some incredible stop setting features that you have available to you on the site. We're going to dig into all that today. Of course, you know what it is. It's all new. It's all here. It's Stock Charts in Focus. my friends welcome to the show thank you so much for joining me here on stock charts in focus of course our product focus show on stock charts tv where we dig into the site dive into the tools show you around the features help you get more value out of stock charts that is our mission every friday here on stock charts in focus my name is grayson rose vice president of operations here at stockcharts.com if you've been joining us on the show for a long time, welcome back. If you are new to the show, welcome, welcome. Great to have you. Uh, again, you know, our, our mission here on the show is really just to show you tools and features, things that you have available to you, and talk about how those apply to the markets and to taking a technical approach to the market. So on a day like today, we're actually going to talk about stop setting. We're going to talk about how some of the tools that you have available to you uh, around the site in ACP and in Sharp Charts can help you in your stop setting. Now, stop setting, obviously, a very complex topic, something that uh, is constantly evolving for all of us as investors, as traders, but something that is incredibly important to finding success in the market. Uh, there's a lot of uh, strategy out there around stop setting, a lot of different tools, a lot of different approaches. So what we're going to highlight today are four of the tools that I actually use in my own personal approach to trading and investing and setting stops for my own positions. Specifically, we're going to talk about one indicator. We're going to talk about two annotation tools. And then we're also going to talk about how you can use our alert features on stock charts as a stop setting tool. So we've got lots to cover. Let's get right to it. So we're starting here in ACP, and as I mentioned at the start of the show, we're actually going to show you how you can use these tools in both platforms, ACP, our Interactive Advanced Charting Platform, and Sharp Charts, our original tool, the legacy tool, the one that, uh, that many of you are also probably using. Uh, what we have here, though, in ACP, I've pulled up a very specific chart. Uh, this might look kind of interesting to you. Some of you might be familiar with this indicator, but our first stop on today's tour, the first stop setting feature that we are going to look at is an indicator called the parabolic SAR. Now, the parabolic SAR was actually developed by Wells Wilder uh, back in the 70s. Uh, and what Wells did here was create a very easy to interpret tool, even though the formula behind it is actually pretty complex. Now, the parabolic SAR displays as these little dots above and below the price bar on our charts. The, the formula, like I said, is a little bit complex. We're actually not going to dig into that uh, too much today. But what we are going to talk about is the interpretation of this tool and how you can actually use it as a stop setting tool. Now, there are tons and tons of different uses for this. Uh, a lot of people like to use it as a buy signal when that, uh, when that little dot sort of reverses and becomes sort of below the, uh, the price bars. A lot of people also like to use it as a sell signal when the parabolic star reverses and you got the dots above the price bars. People like to use this as a trend following indicator, but you can also use it as a stop setting tool. So that's what we're going to talk about here today. Now, before we really kind of dive in, one of the cool things that I want to show you in ACP, when you add this indicator to your charts, of course, you can come over here, open up the chart settings menu on the left side of the platform, look for that add indicator menu. You can scroll down to find it in this menu, or if you want to make it easy for yourself, you can actually just type in this box to find the parabolic SAR. I've gone ahead and set up this chart with it. Uh, but once you've actually added that indicator to your charts, you can access the settings for it here in the sort of chart outline up at the top. You can click that little gears icon. Or right on the chart itself, you can actually just click the label. Now, what's interesting, what I want to highlight here is that in ACP, we've actually built in a pretty helpful feature in the edit indicator menu for all of the different indicators in the platform. At the bottom of this panel, 
you see you have a couple of different options. You can close down the panel, you can reset it to its default features uh, or uh, default settings. You can delete it, but you also have this little question mark icon. When you give that a click, it actually opens up the documentation for that indicator. So for instance, here in the, uh, in the help tools that we have available on the site outside of ACP, we have an entire article dedicated to the parabolic SAR. This talks about sort of how it was created, Wells Wilder and, and what he did back in the 70s creating this indicator, gets into the calculation a little bit, and then starts to dig into some of the interpretation behind it, how to use it, how to customize some of the settings, uh, setting up the different steps and, uh, and modifying it to fit how you wanna use the parabolic SAR on your charts. Even at the bottom here, we've got a, a section on using this with sharp charts, and we even have some suggested scans actually uh, that you can run for different parabolic SAR moves. Uh, so lots of uh, helpful documentation here in our, uh, our, our support center. And you can actually get there very, very easily right from ACP simply by looking for that little question mark at the bottom of the edit indicator panel. So again, for the sake of time on today's show, we're more going to talk about this indicator, what it is, how you can use it. Uh, but you also have that link right there to the documentation for you. Now, I think we mentioned this at the beginning, but in case we didn't, Parabolic SAR, you might be wondering what that stands for. What's SAR? Well, Parabolic SAR actually stands for stop and reverse. So when we think of this as a stop setting tool, we've got the word stop actually built into the name of the tool. So when we talk about using this as a stop setting tool, uh, again, stop setting, very, very complex, lots of different features uh, that you can use, lots of different strategies that you can use. But ultimately, what you're trying to do with stop setting is protect your profits. So when you have a stock, like in this case, Fortinet, FTNT, that's on a nice run to the upside, we're trying to lock in profits, protect those profits on this run in case the trend reverses. So what I've done here with this specific chart, I've pulled up a, uh, a stock in this case that has been trending nicely for a long time. And we can sort of take a look at how the parabolic SAR can help us in this case. So again, if we thought of, uh, if we think about sort of buying this using the parabolic SAR to set our stops, we've got sort of a, a breakout here in Fortinet back, uh, back on this candle. So let's say we bought into that breakout. Well, we've got these little dots here that can tell us basically where we might wanna set our stops. These are uh, you know, ideas, uh, a stop level that you might wanna consider. And we can sort of pair this with some of the other tools that we're gonna use uh, later in the show, our, uh, our other features we're gonna to highlight today to come up with strong stop placement ideas. So again, when you think about this trend and we think about these dots moving to the upside, these can actually be sort of indicators that we can use to set our stops as this trend continues. So as the trend continues, the stock is moving higher, we can adjust our trailing stops up uh, based on where these parabolic SAR dots are for the stock. So the parabolic SAR, a very interesting indicator, again, uh, lots, uh, lots to it in terms of the formula, but the interpretation of it is actually pretty easy. Uh, if the dots are below the price bars, that trend is continuing to the upside. And when it reverses and as those dots flip to uh, above the price bars, that means there might be a reversal in that stock. Now, there are quite a lot of reversals here. So a lot of people look at the parabolic SAR and they say, how can I use this? There's so many reversals. How do I not get sort of flipped out, uh, you know, out of this, uh, this stock? Uh, too much. Again, with stop setting, there's no exact science to it. Uh, what we're trying to do, again, is protect those profits. We're trying to set reasonable levels that the stock might bounce off of or might break through and, uh, and move to the downside, you know, further to the downside through. Um, so when we think about using the parabolic star to set these stops, these are really just kind of ideas that we might want to keep in mind. Again, we're going to pair this with some of the other tools that we're looking at uh, to actually come up with specific stop areas that we might want to set, specific stop uh, levels that we might want to set. So when we think about using the parabolic SAR to actually set some of these stops uh, and not get sort of tripped up by some of these reversals that we have, let's actually go ahead and turn on the inspector, which is going to add these little horizontal and vertical lines to our chart. Let's think, okay, maybe we bought in on this breakout up here. We can set our stop according to some of these parabolic SAR levels. And let's say we left that in there. We left that as our stop level above the, uh, the breakout, the initial position that we took. So we've got that stock, it's flying to the upside, coming up, takes a bit of a breather, and we actually see a parabolic SAR reversal. 
Now that gets flipped again on this candle right here where the parabolic star reverses again and now moves back below the price bars. If our initial position was kind of down here and we're using some of these parabolic star levels to set that stop, well, that actually didn't get tripped. You can see that we, uh, we never actually made it below that stop level, even though we did get a parabolic star reversal. So now once we get that reversal and then it flips again, so we've had actually two parabolic star reversals and this move starts to the upside, that might be a good indicator for us to actually move that stop up to some of these new parabolic star levels here. We can ride that trend up and do the same thing again. And again, we're, we're combining this with some of the other stop tools that we're going to look at in just a minute. Uh, this is kind of one of the data points, one of the tools that you have available to you to help figure out some of the key levels that you might want to set your stops at. So again, uh, some of these reversals might trip you out if you if you actually get a true you know major trend reversal. Uh, that uh, that reversal is going to last a lot longer. We might get all the way down to our stop level. That'll be hit, and we'll be out of the position. Uh, but again, for sort of trend following and stop setting along the way, the parabolic star gives you a great sense of kind of where you might want to place your stops, uh, where some intelligent levels might be. So there's our first stop setting tool. We talked a little bit about the parabolic star taking a look at how you can use that indicator. Let's flip over now to our next two, which actually are both gonna be annotation tools. They're gonna to be very similar to each other, but we'll take a look at some of the annotation tools that I love using for stop setting. So here in ACP, to get to the annotation tools, you can look on the left side of the screen, we've got the little pencil and the little ruler icon. And when you open that up, that opens up the annotations panel here in ACP. These are all of the different annotation tools that you have available to you. Trend lines, some different uh, shape tools, circles, rectangles, squares, that kind of thing. Line studies down below. If you're looking for Fibonacci stuff, that's down here. Lots of different annotation tools that you have available to you. And you can customize the look of those annotation tools with these menus up above. So color, line settings, all of that kind of thing up above. Now, for stop setting purposes, we can actually use some of these tools to come up with reasonable levels for support and resistance, key price levels that we might want to set our stops at. So we'll actually flip over to a different ticker. Let's pull up CrowdStrike, one that's actually been moving higher and then consolidating a little bit and breaking out now again uh, from that consolidation range. So this is an interesting one to use with some of these uh, annotation tools that we're going to take a look at right now. So first up, what we're going to highlight is actually some of the trend line tools, one that I use a ton, especially for stocks like this that are, again, you know, consolidating, making a breakout. And we want to track those support and resistance levels really closely. So we can come over here. I'm actually going to customize. I've got trend line selected here. You can see that I'm actually going to customize the color of this. Personally, I like to use purple annotations. That's just kind of my little thing. And I'm actually going to drag the opacity down so that they are uh, sort of transparent, a little easier to see on the chart. I'm then going to make this a solid thick line because that's what I like to use personally. And now we've got our trend line selected. We've got a thick line. We've got our purple color. And we can actually start to draw these lines across the chart. The interesting thing, though, that I want to point out today, you can see that when we draw this trend line, it's just uh, whatever angle we want to draw it. In this case, though, we're really kind of trying to highlight some of these support and resistance levels for CrowdStrike in this case. So we might want this to actually be a perfectly horizontal line. For instance, we can see right in here that CrowdStrike really was kind of testing these levels uh, in what was that around 225, maybe even a little higher up to 250 between 225 and 250, uh, really testing those levels. Those were key resistance levels for this stock. Now that we've made the breakout, we can see that that's actually turned into a pretty key support level for the stock. So if we draw this uh, this line across and think of using this as actually a stop setting tool, this might be if we bought this breakout, this might be where we want to set that stop. And as the stock continues higher, we want to move that higher and higher along with that trend to the upside. We want this line, though, to be perfectly horizontal. So what we can do is actually just hold down. I'll make this really clear to see hold down the command key on your keyboard. And when you then go to annotate this, you'll see that it actually snapped to be perfectly horizontal. So it makes it really, really easy to draw horizontal lines across your chart. Again, if you draw a line on your chart and then hold down the command key, that'll actually snap it to be a perfectly horizontal line. So really, really easy to draw these lines across your chart. So we can actually highlight 
these consolidation ranges. And when we think about using this as a stop setting tool, again, if we took a new position in CrowdStrike off of this breakout, maybe we'd want to put this kind of right in there. And we could actually use this then to determine important uh, support and resistance levels and stop setting levels that we might want for the stock. As we own this, as we uh, see it moving higher, we can actually move these lines up as well. We can save these annotations to this chart, actually continue to drag those lines up higher and use this annotation tool as a stop setting tool. So one that I love to use here in, uh, in ACP is that trend line tool, setting that perfectly horizontal again with that command key. But something that's actually pretty similar, I'm gonna actually delete these annotations off. Uh, another tool that's in here that's very, very similar and actually has a little bit more to it is the auto support and resistance tool. So we can give this a click, auto support and resistance, select our line width here. Uh, it's actually gonna take on the opacity from whatever, uh, whatever you had set here. It will override the color as you'll see in just a sec, but the opacity, uh, if you set that in this menu, that opacity actually will get set for the auto support and resistance tool as well. But when you select this, what this is gonna do is create a horizontal line across the chart that will be colored red or green automatically depending on where price is above or below that support and resistance line. So as you'll see here in CrowdStrike, we can position this and right here, we've got price below that, uh, that auto support and resistance line that we've set on this chart. So this line turns red, but as soon as price crosses above it, uh, we actually turn that line green automatically. And if we scale this back, you can see the different sections of that line will change to be red or green depending on where price is relative to it. So this is actually a beautiful stop setting tool because again, you can use those trend lines to highlight important support and resistance levels, uh, important points where you might wanna actually mark your stops. But you can also use this auto support and resistance tool, which is very, very similar. Um, you can use this and it's actually colored automatically to make it really, really clear and obvious where price is relative to that line. The other nice thing about this auto support and resistance tool is that it tells you the price right here over on the right side. So again, if we set this for, uh, for CrowdStrike, maybe this would be our stop level. We bought in on the breakout, we came back, we tested it. This is gonna be an important stop level for us. If we see price start to break below here around 246.82, that might be a good signal to get out. So as we're, uh, as we're trying to figure out where we wanna set our stops, this auto support and resistance tool actually can be another incredibly helpful one to use. Now, we've highlighted three here. We've got the parabolic SAR, we've got the trend line tools, and we've got the auto support and resistance tool. The final one that we are gonna to highlight today here in ACP is our alert tool. Probably my favorite of all the ones that we're gonna cover actually today. And in ACP, we've done some pretty cool things to make this tool very, very, very useful for you. So we've got our chart and let's say we wanna set an alert for a specific price level that we might wanna use as a stop for the position that we have on. Well, to do that in ACP, it's super, super easy. All we've gotta do is come down to the left side of the screen, look for that little bell icon. And when we open that up, it opens the create alert panel. Now you've got a couple of different options here in the create alert panel. First and foremost, you've got your trigger settings. So you can either choose crosses above or crosses below. In this case, if we're thinking about stop setting, we wanna be alerted if the price crosses below a specific level. So we wanna select crosses below right here. And from there, all we have to do is enter in our price. But we don't wanna actually have to enter in this price manually. So in ACP, we've made this super, super easy. When you open up this create alert panel and you hover over the chart, you'll see that the crosshairs automatically turn on for you. From there, all you have to do is click on the chart and the price level that you've clicked at will actually be added to that price entry box. So in this case, let's say this was gonna be our, uh, our stop level, uh, sort of that breakout for CrowdStrike. All we have to do, hover over the level that we want, click on the chart. You can see we get a little label over there, just flashes on the screen, says price entered. We've got our price now entered into this box. And from there, we can select our notification type. So you can either be notified on the Stock Charts website here in ACP and around the rest of the site as well. You can get an email to whatever your, uh, your user ID is that you have set on your Stock Charts account, or you can get a text message. Uh, so a lot of different options here for, uh, for notifying you. 
In this case, you might actually want all of them turned on because if something that you own is breaking down through a key level, you might want all those notification type set so you really get buzzed uh, when, that, uh, when that move is happening in the markets. From there, all you gotta do, hit save alert and you're done. Your alert has been saved. You're now automatically gonna get a text, an email or a website notification and or a website notification uh, whenever that move happens. So when we think about stop setting, this is actually the one that I use probably the most, uh, really my favorite. A little bit of a manual process to go in and update these, uh, but again, stop setting something that is incredibly important to protect your profits. So the fact that in ACP here, you can click at those different levels, set price alerts for a position that you have on, uh, or a stock you're watching. This is also a great breakout tool, great to buy tool, great sell tool, that kind of thing. Um, but for stop setting specifically, the ability to kind of adjust these really easy, uh, uh, you know, on the uh, on the rise up uh, in ACP, just clicking on the chart to set those price alerts as the trend goes, uh, an incredible feature, something that I use a ton. So those are our four features for stop setting here in ACP, four of the ones that I use the most, four of my favorites. We've got the parabolic SAR, we've got our trend line tools, specifically being able to lock that into uh, to the horizontal position, totally flat, uh, flat line there. We've got our auto support and resistance tool as well, another great one for identifying key price levels and really watching how price is trading above or below that level. And finally, we've got our price alert tool here in ACP, makes it really easy to dynamically click and add those alerts to your account. Now, a lot of these tools are available outside of ACP as well. Uh, ACP makes it really easy to access a lot of this stuff, but let's actually jump outside of ACP over to the rest of the site and we'll see how some of these work over there. So to get out of ACP, we can actually just open up your dashboard right from this menu. We'll head on over to the dashboard, take a look at what's happening in the markets, and we're actually gonna jump over from here to the Sharp Charts Workbench. So I'm gonna type in, let's do FTNT again. We'll go back to Fortinet. Now, here's my default chart in Sharp Charts, but I've actually set up a specific chart style, uh, just like I had in ACP. I've actually got a Parabolic SAR chart style saved to my account. Makes it really easy to access this. I have the same thing in ACP as well. I've actually saved that chart that we were looking at as a standalone chart style. So it makes it really easy to get back to that view anytime I wanna pull it up. But here in Sharp Charts, we have the same indicator available, the parabolic stop and reverse parabolic SAR. You can add that to your charts down here in the overlays section. Just uh, open up this menu, choose parabolic SAR. You can customize your colors. You can customize your parameter, what the step values are, all of that good stuff right here for you. So the parabolic SAR available in Sharp Charts as well as ACP, really easy to add to your charts. Now the same goes for those annotation tools that we were looking at. So let's actually get back to, let's do CrowdStrike again. We'll open this up uh, in the annotation tool for Sharp Charts, which is actually located right here. There's that little annotate button. We can give that a click, open this up. And in this case, I've actually got my, uh, my purple color here selected because that's the one that I use quite a lot. Uh, ACP uh, or, or Sharp Charts will actually kind of remember those uh, those colors that you've used recently. So a nice little helpful tool here. And we can go ahead and open this menu up and select trend line. Let's take a, a look at that one first. We can open up that trend line tool, select our line width, select our line style. In this case, I actually use a dashed line a lot in, uh, in Sharp Charts. I use a solid line in ACP and a dashed line in Sharp Charts. Not sure why, but that's what I like to do. But I like in both cases to use the thickest line possible. The same concept goes, we can draw that line across. We see our, we get our, uh, our purple line. We can actually make that a little darker, make it easier to see. Uh, we can turn off the uh, little arrowhead there. And the same concept applies. We've got that same snap to horizontal feature here in Sharp Trait. So if we hold down the command key, you'll see that actually snaps to be a horizontal line. Now, I could have mentioned this earlier, but uh, in ACP and in Sharp Charts, this same trend line trick actually applies on the vertical side as well. So if it's a little bit closer to a vertical line, you can actually snap it to be perfectly, ver uh, perfectly vertical simply by holding down that command key. But in this case, we're looking at snapping it to be a perfectly flat horizontal line. So we can do that. We can use this trend line tool actually uh, to draw those horizontal lines across. And if we had a stock that was continuing higher, we can actually use this to draw those stop levels on the chart 
uh, make it really clear, draw those little horizontal lines, make sure that they're perfectly flat, makes it really easy to see. We've got the same access though to our auto support and resistance tool as well. So we can open up that same menu at the top left, select auto support and resistance, and here we go. We've got that same tool available here in Sharp Charts, automatically coloring the line depending on what the price is, uh, how the price is trading relative to that position. So another one that makes it really easy to, uh, to draw these lines across, set those on the chart. And we can actually uh, change the opacity here again by sort of selecting some of the lower opacity colors uh, in the uh, little color menu there. Uh, but as we draw this, we get that uh, little price level on the left-hand side. You can see that sort of floating there. So it makes it really easy to position these lines uh, and, uh, and see that auto support and resistance tool with that auto coloring. Uh, I always love to have that view. So for stop setting, again, you could actually have one auto support and resistance line that you're sort of dragging up on a save chart as you go, as the trend continues. So we'll close this out. We actually won't save this chart, uh, but that's how you can access those annotation tools, same ones that we're looking at over in ACP. Those are also available here in Sharp Charts. Now, finally, for price alerts, you can actually access that from a couple of different locations. Uh, you've always got access around the rest of stock charts to the Your Alerts menu right here. So that's probably the easiest place to go, but you can also get there from the Charts and Tools page and from your dashboard. But if you open up that Your Alerts page, this is gonna show you, this is what we call sort of the alert center. Uh, this is gonna show you all of your price alerts and all of your advanced alerts in one place. Now it makes it really easy to access any of those, uh, those price alerts that you've saved, but you can also jump over here and uh, open up the price alert workbench, the specific price alert workbench, type in a ticker symbol, again, choose that trigger, choose your uh, notification type and enter in a specific price. So if you wanna come over here to the price alert workbench and create some of those price alerts, really easy, uh, sort of a similar user interface there. You can just enter in the details or select any of your existing price alerts. So for instance, maybe you've got one set on, uh, on Adobe, you could actually come in here, adjust those prices and then hit save and that'll uh, keep those up to date keep them moving higher as you go. So again, using those alert tools, I find that is one of the best stop setting tools on stock charts. Uh, you know, combining that with some of these other tools like the parabolic SAR and those uh, trend line and auto, auto support and resistance lines, moving those lines up and then actually setting alerts for those specific price levels to make sure that you really are locked in and, uh, and monitoring your stop levels for all your different positions uh, actively. Even when you're not watching the markets, these alert tools really help you keep an eye on what's happening. Make sure that you stay up to date, never miss a thing in the markets. So I know we covered a ton on today's show, ran through some stuff in ACP, ran through some stuff in Sharp Charts. Uh, again, top four tools for me, some that I use a lot in my own approach to the markets. I love having that chart style for the parabolic SAR, makes it really easy to just kind of flip over to that view when I wanna see what's happening with that specific indicator. And then using those annotation tools, drawing those lines across. Again, the uh, the concept there is something that I do a lot. I've got a list that's got all of my different positions in it, and I'm using those annotation tools to actually draw my stop levels on the charts. I can move those up as we go, it makes it really easy to follow along. And then with those alert tools, I really can stay up to date with my stops by setting those specific price alerts at those specific stop levels. Really easy to do in ACP just by clicking on the charts, but you can also keep that up to date from that technical alert workbench that we were taking a look at. Uh, you can actually update those, uh, those price alerts as you go to kind of move those higher. So some great monitoring tools you have available to you here in stock charts. I want to thank you again so much for joining me on today's edition of Stock Charts in Focus. It's been a blast to be with you. Remember, we do this show every Friday, 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time on Stock Charts TV, also up on our YouTube channel after that, and the on-demand platform at StockChartsTV.com. That's a separate new thing that we've, uh, we've actually just rolled out a couple of months ago. Lots of different ways to watch that new on-demand platform, though. Makes it really easy to stream across all your different devices, Roku, Apple TV, Chromecast, everything. Uh, you can actually bookmark stuff, come back to it, watch on your iPad, watch on your tablet, watch on your phone. Tons of different ways to watch there at stockchartstv.com. Go check that out if you haven't already. Uh, but again, thank you so much for joining me. Hopefully I'll see you again on another edition of Stock Charts and Focused next Friday. 
Until then, chart on, my friends. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.